Hi guys, good to see you all again. Hope you're all keeping well and managing to keep busy behind the camera now that we can finally get out and about and you know jump in the car and do a few more miles and get to some of the spots that we've been longing to get to for the last two or three months. So it's been brilliant to get out, I'm sure you'll agree. Hopefully you've been filling your boots. But uh, weather's not been too great this week, not down here on the south coast anyway. Wind's been blowing an absolute hoolie, so I've been doing a bit of scoping in the new forest and uh, even deep in the forest, the branches are swaying about and there's bits and bobs falling from the canopy and knocking me on the head. So not the best conditions, especially at low shutter speeds, you know, when you're at a high F stop, F9, F11, and you, you know, you want to get a nice bit of depth. The leaves are just a blur with the wind being so strong. So hopefully, fingers crossed, next few days it's going to calm down a bit and I'll be able to get out again and, uh, and get some proper shooting done. But uh, I found a few nice areas anyway with some nice gnarly oaks. But I say the conditions have just not been great for slow shutter speed. So I so, uh, kept the camera in the bag and just had a good scope around. But uh, anyway, because I'm indoors, I've got a few Photoshop techniques that I've picked up lately. I've got a Lumenzia masking, uh, luminosity masking tool that I've recently got, a plug-in for Photoshop, so I'll show you that. But first, I just thought I'd show you the Auton effect and how it can give your image a lovely, nice, atmospheric, smooth look. So let's dive in now and have a look. Right, so I've got this image here that I actually took on the iPhone just during a scouting walk around the forest. Sometimes it's, I, I quite often got into a good habit now of just getting the phone out and trying different compositions with the phone. You know, gone are the days of walking around with squares, just get the phone out and take a few different compositions and if one works then you can get all your gear out. If it doesn't really work, you can move on to the next composition, you know. But uh, anyway, this is a little bit punchy at the moment and I say the Auton effect, it gives it a nice atmospheric, smooth, soft sort of flowing look, a bit like a paint, painty look, you know, so, and it's dead simple to do. So I've got this image here, it's a single layer, so I'm just going to duplicate the layer, duplicate the layer, and then I'm going to go into Gaussian blur, is it? Gaussian blur? So into filter, down to blur and Gaussian blur, and then take the blur way out, way over the top, so that you can just see what the image is still. Um, there's no, there's no certain radius to take, see I'm at 33 here, 33.1, anywhere around there, it's good. just so that you can just see what the image is, so okay on that, and then into image, adjust and levels, or command L, and then really exaggerate the frame, so up with the highlights, down with the shadows, I mean that looks absolutely awful but you'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. So that's that done. That's the Auton effect basically produced. And now we're going to take the opacity on the duplicate layer, the background copy, down to zero. There's your original file. And now we're just going to bring the opacity percentage back up. And I sort of work from 10 to 20%, depending on the image. Some images it works really well, especially obviously woodlands, which is the example I'm showing you here. Some images it doesn't. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna go straight to 10% and have a look at that. And then just take the layer off. You can see the difference there. It's definitely smoothing down the whole image. Let's go to 15%. So we'll go up to 15% again. That's without and that's with. And you can see it's giving it a nice dreamy effect which is great on certain woodland scenes. Let's just take it up to 20% just to really max it out. And then that's with, that's without. You can see it's really punchy, but the Auton effect, it keeps the punch, it keeps the pop, but it just gives it that, almost that dehazy look. And you're in total control of it, you see. So that's at 20%, so that's with, and that's without. And I think 20% on this particular image works really well. So yeah. That's the Auton effect. Right, so I've just flattened this image. I'm gonna stick with this image for now and just show you how I quickly add the, or use the perspective warp just to bring these trees vertical again. Cause obviously it's on the iPhone, pretty standard uh, camera. And it's just given the trees a bit of a, a lean in. So I've layered the image, like I said. So we go into edit, perspective warp, and then Drag over the image, just drag over the image like that. Hit the enter key. And now we're just gonna pull 
that top corner and just watch for this, this tree. I'm keeping my eye on this tree here. Just going to pull it out a little bit more, making sure to keep the image and your warp box horizontal. And let's take this one out as well. Just so that that tree is nearly vertical. I think that wants to go a little bit more, too much. Let's just go back a bit. Let's just take that one a bit more to the right. There we go. And then just hit enter. And there we are. That's squared up these trees nicely. These trees are a bit wobbly anyway, so to speak, but that's just giving our perspective. It's just brought the trees out nicely. And that's perspective warp. Right, luminosity masking. Something that I've been a bit wary about of late and uh, never really got into using tone masks and colour masks. But with the aid of this third party plugin called Lumenzia that works in dark tones, mid tones, and light tones, as you can see here, it's a great tool. Now, I say I was a bit wary about it, but everyone seems to be using it, so I thought I better get myself up to speed and get this plug in and start using layer masking for dodging and burning. So I'm sure we all use dodging and burning, it's a great tool, but this allows you to select certain tones, certain values in your image. I'll show you how it works now briefly. I'm no expert, I've only just picked it up, but uh, it is a great tool. Now, I want to work on this steam from the Flying Scotsman here. Now, as you can see, there's a few different tones, and I want to make them mid-tones nice and dark and give that steam a bit of depth. So what I could do in the old-fashioned old terms, I could get the old lasso tool, draw around them dark tones, only briefly, choose my dark palette, choose the brush, and then obviously I'm at 100% here, and I could colour in that, you know. Obviously, if I take the opacity down, so say 23%, and just colour in that, I could do it that way. Obviously, this is going really quick. But it's also colouring in and burning some of those highlighted tones, which I don't really want. So, with the aid of Lumenzia and the luminosity masking, I can choose a certain tone, and it will show me in black and white, as it makes the layer mask, it will turn the image black and white, as you'll see here. So let's go to say L3. I tell you what, I think this is as this is a mid-tone, I'm going to choose M1. And it's going to now turn it black and white, and it's now showing me all the areas that will be affected by my layer mask brush. Now obviously it's all the white areas. So as you can see here, these black areas will not be affected whatsoever when I brush my layer mask tool or the brush over the white areas. So what I'm going to do now, I've chosen mid one. I'm going to hit dodge, dodge and burn. It automatically chooses my brush. I've got the black palette selected and I'm at 20%. Let's take that. Let's go flat out 100% and see what it does. So as you can see, I'm brushing just pretty willy-nilly over the steam, and it's only affecting the mid-tones, which is fantastic. Really detailed and really precise. Now don't forget, some of the train was white as well, so I've got to be a little bit careful along these areas. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to use the square brackets, just take that down a bit. I don't want to be burning any of that train if I can help it. So it's still picking out, look, as I'm brushing, it's picking out in darker areas. There we are, look, obviously because it's lower to the ground. So it's picking out in dark areas. It's not affecting the highlighted areas, which I love. It's great. So let's just move it along a bit, brush it along. So them highlighted areas are not being touched. It's only touching the mid-tone areas. So if we now zoom out, that's a load better. So let's just go before and after, and it's really brought out their mid-tone, it's given that steam a real good bit of depth. So we could do it again if we wanted, we could go into mid again. Let's choose mid two this time, so slightly brighter. Back to dodge and burn again. Now I'm gonna go down on the opacity to 50% this time, I don't wanna affect it overly, I don't wanna go mad. Let's take the brush up a bit, and now we're just gonna do them tones again, look. I don't wanna to go too much, 
Otherwise, it's actually gone too far now. Let's just go before and after. So I'm going to go before and I'm going to take my opacity down again to about 20%. Go back to dodge, back to burn. We're at 20% and now just going to go over there. And that's plenty enough now. That's plenty enough. So that is how easy Lumenzia and layer masking is. So it creates its own layer masks. You start off with one image, one layer, and it just creates it for you as soon as you hit that dodge button. And then you can choose your opacity and it's as easy as that. Right, that's one way of layer masking. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. I'm not gonna save it for now. Now this next image is at Corf Castle, Sunrise. Now I had to overexpose the image so that I got the foreground and the castle 95% exposure correct, but obviously it's bleached out, it's burnt out the sky, and I want to bring that sun back a bit. So let's go to L1. Right, that's too bright. Obviously, we're thinking about the white areas again, and obviously, we don't want to affect any of the foreground. So let's go to L4. Let's try L3. Back to L4. Because L3, just there, look, I might affect them tones and I don't want to. So let's go L4. That's leaving us with grey and white areas in the sky. And that's the areas that it's going to affect. So go to dodge. Dodge and burn. Now I've got my black selected. I'm going to take that right up, the opacity. I'm going to take the opacity right up to 100% and try and do the sky in one pass. So we've got black selected. Let's make our brush a bit larger. And now let's just go over and straight away, it's darkening the sky off nicely. That's just the job that is. So I'm going to do another pass. That's at 100%. Come on, hurry up. Right, I'm going to do another pass at L4 again. Let's just try L3. Let's leave it at L3 and I'll be careful with that horizon there. Into dodge, leaving it on black again, still at 100%. I'm going to bring that sun in a bit more, look. It's bringing it in lovely now. Really nicely. Bringing that in nicely. Right. That's great. Now, what I can do with this as well, I can add colour if I want to. So, obviously, if I'd have brought the exposure down, the sky would have been pretty deep orange, a deep brown orange. So, this time, I'm going to go to L3 again. I'm going to go Dodge. Dodge and burn, but this time I'm going to change that black palette for a, an orangey browny colour. See if we can make that sky a bit of a deeper colour. We're at 100% again, we're flat out. Let's just burn it in, look. And that's lovely. It's giving the sky a nice brown tinge now. That's fantastic. That's, that's bringing it back. It's brought the sun in nicely. So it's not affecting this area at all, look. Not affecting it at all, because don't forget, it was black when it created the layer mask. Come on, laptop, catch up. Right. Now this area here, still a little bit bright. So I'm going to go to L4, which has just highlighted this area. Let's go L5. Now we'll stick with L4, and we're just going to work on that bit now. So dodge, dodge and burn. Now I'm going to change that back to black, just to darken off that area above the sun. And it's only going to affect that area, look, and it's just affected that area. That's nice. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's brought that sun back. It's not overly exposed it. It's not underexposed it. It's, it's about right, that. So what we can do now, we can turn the tables, and I can now work on the foreground. So I'm going to go to D3. Let's try D3. So, as you can see, the foreground is now white, the sky is now black, that will not be affected, so I can now work on the foreground. So let's go dodge, dodge and burn, and I probably just want to tone it down a little bit, so I'm going to keep it on black, but I'm going to take that down to let's say 30%, 31%, and now just brush over and it's just going to darken off the foreground ever so slightly. There we go. I can run it in the sky. It won't affect the sky because the sky was black and it's just brought 
that down nicely and pretty happy with that to be fair Cool, the old laptops were in a way look and that's another way how you can use colour in Lumenza as well and I've got one more image to show you let's get rid of that I've already worked on that so it's just an example right we've got Beach Avenue here obviously it's sunrise the sun was coming through the gaps in the trees and giving a lovely orange effect on these beech trees and you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to touch up that sunrise reflection on the beech trees and give it a little bit more colour. So we're going to go, let's try L3, let's go L2, and again it's the white areas or the lighter areas that are going to be affected. So I'm going to work with that, so that was L2, into dodge, dodge and burn, let's change that black, let's pick the colour that's actually on the trees, let's go for that colour there look, so it's going to give me an orange. I'm just going to go a bit deeper than that, more of a brown, make my brush smaller with the brackets and then I'm just going to run over the orange bits just to emphasise the orange bits a bit, just running it over so it's only going to work on the light bits. So what I'm going to do, I might just increase the opacity, let's go flat out 100. You can see now how it's turning them, it's really bringing that colour in now and it's not affecting all them dark areas, so it's only affecting the light areas that the sun is shining on. And again, these leaves will go a bit browner, look, up here, we can make that a bit browner. Don't want to work on these because there's no, I don't want to make it artificial, so I'm just working on the orange areas. And this might be a little bit much really, but you, you get the idea. And lastly on this, I want to work on the highlights. So let's go L5. Let's try L4. L3. Now let's try L4. I just want to take them highlights down a little bit. So I'm going to change my colour palette back to black. I'm going to go 100% and it's just going to bring down the highlights now just in these trees, just bringing them highlights down a little bit. You can hardly notice the difference, it's so subtle, but it's just bringing these highlights down and then getting at the end of the road, and that's nice. And I'm just gonna do that road, just gonna go to L3, let's try L2. I just wanna take the highlight down at the end of the road, it's just a little bit bright. So we're on black, we're at 100%, Let's just take that down a bit, look, and that's lovely. Let's just try it in between these trees. It's just taking the highlights down, look, on these trees again. Just taking them back a bit. Just takes your eye off the, the bright areas. Make sure I go to them colours. Let's just try the road, look. It's hardly affecting it. And that's that. So, let's just take before, look. A little bit of colour there. You can hardly notice the difference, but it has added a little bit of colour. You don't want to go overboard, and that's the great thing about Lumenzia. You don't have to go overboard. You can alter that opacity to suit, and you can work on them specific tones, which I love, which is great. And that's that. Jobs are good un. Right, sticking with this image, one last trick that I want to show you. I'm just going to flatten that. Right, there's a new texture slider in camera raw so shift command a brings up the camera raw and this texture tool I'm sure you've all seen it but just in case you haven't it's great so I always used to work in clarity to soften up soften up the images or bring the images out whatever sort of effect you want but now the texture tool is so much lighter so just by taking the texture tool down a bit I can make that a lovely wispy sort of almost dreamy effect. It gives you that nice dreamy effect, the texture tool. tool. Get the words out. So yeah, you could always go past. It's like it, it's it's like the clarity tool, but a lot softer. So at the minute, this image to me is just a little bit harsh. So I'm just gonna take that down to about minus 30. That's okay, that. And it's just giving that image a nice soft look. 
So let's go Control Z. You can see it's just brought the leaves in a bit, and then it just gives it a nice subtle effect. And that's the texture tool. Check it out on Camera Raw, it's great. Right, and that's the lot, guys. So I hope that's helped you out. Only a quick video on a few editing tips, but uh, I think there was four there. So uh, yeah, try them out. They're great tools, and I say Lumenzia, I'd be lost without it now, especially when you've got some nice wispy clouds and you want to bring them clouds in on you know on certain images, you can really darken off them stormy clouds or anything. So yeah, Lumenzia, it's about thirty-five pounds, I think, but everyone's using it because everyone is using it. There's loads of tutorials on YouTube, so. You can really pick it up pretty quick. I've learnt it pretty quick. Still a lot more to learn on it, but uh, it's a great it's a great tool for working on them specific tones. So uh, yeah, go and check it out. But uh, jobs are good. Em. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. Any comments below, by the way, comment below. Love to hear from you guys, and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. That'd be much appreciated. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Catch up soon.